Hello and welcome back, guys. We need to understand now that uh, how we can um, debug our services, right? You have uh, you started your service from here, and you want to debug on the real time that if something uh, is happening and you are able to reproduce the issue, and you want to see that how the code is really flowing, how the code is going from one function to the other function, what is the you know flow of the process? Then in that case, you can do the debugging. You can put the breakpoint. And then you can see that how actually the things are going on. Uh, but the thing is like uh, most of the people don't know that how we can put the breakpoint uh, when you are debugging a service. How to debug a service basically that is again a problem for most of the people. right? So let me show you that how you can debug it. First of all we have done one thing like uh, in case you have uh, you know uh, the logging enabled then in that case it, it becomes easy for you to find out like from where the bug has come. Right from where at what point the issue is coming. Sometimes the fixes are simpler after you are able to see that this is the issue. After that, you are able to reproduce it. Sometimes the fixes are simpler, but sometimes you don't understand just from the log that how the process is actually behaving, how the flow is going into one uh, function from there and then to the other function. So, in that case, what we need to do, we need to debug actually debug our uh, process uh, at the real time. Okay, and if once you are able to reproduce it and you are able to see the issue locally as well, then in that case, uh, if you are not able to get like why this problem could be happening just from the log, then in that case, you need to put the breakpoint and you need to debug it. Okay, so let me tell you that how it is done. Okay, so first of all, this is the service uh, panel and uh, you need to start it. Okay, we want to debug a service which is actually running, right? So, first of all, let me start it. And uh, you know, then we need to open the Visual Studio 2022. And before you open this, let me tell you one thing that you need to open this as an administrator. Just open it as an administrator. So let me open it as an administrator. Why it is not coming? The option. Okay, first open it. And then continue without code. Our server, uh, our server, our service is running, right? And we know that the exe that we have created uh, is Windows service.exe that is actually running whenever uh, service is running. So in, so, in that case, we need to attach our process, attach our Visual Studio with that process, right? So, how you will attach it? You need to come to here and you need to see where is my process which is running. So if I see what process name is Windows service.exe. This Windows service.exe is the one which is actually running as a service, right? As part of the service. So if you try to attach it, then in that case, it will give you this message if you have not opened your uh, Visual Studio in the administrative mode, right? So it is asking you to restart using different credentials because what are those different credentials? Those different credentials are the administrative credentials uh, to run your Visual Studio. Okay, so just click on it, just place yes, and then you will be able to see that it has been opened again. But now this time it has been opened with the uh, you know administrative privileges. So just continue with code again, without code again. And now you need to do one thing: your service is running, so you will do one thing: you will attach to the process. Come here and let's see windows.service.exe. This is the Windows Service EXE. This is the system process. And now you are going to attach it. Once you have attached it, you can see that things have started running here. It is it has started showing you the how the process memory has been utilized, all the diagnostics, uh, statistics, all those things have been presented here. So now your process has been attached to your Visual Studio code. Now you can uh, you know test your uh, uh, you know, just put, put the breakpoint and you can test like how the code is flowing and where is the problem which is actually happening. So, suppose I just open my file, I know that in which file I have to search for. So, it's like Windows service.cpp, I need to open it. And then after opening it, as of now, the service is running, but I want to show, I want to see that what happens when uh, um, our uh, our program receives a request to close the service. So here, this is the function. This is the function which we have written, where we are receiving that that command 
to uh, to uh, you know uh, just uh, stop the service right so we are going to put a breakpoint here right we are going to put a breakpoint here at this place so that as soon as we we will simply put a command to stop it uh, stop our service then in that case we will be able to uh, reach here our breakpoint will stop here you are able to see that we i, I was able to put a breakpoint very easily here but sometimes you won't be able to put the breakpoint here i will explain that when you will not be able to do that right so i have just placed the breakpoint here but not every time you will be able to put it you will be able to put it every time only when you have created the program database i will tell you what is program database and how it is created so if you have created the program database then only you will be able to debug it otherwise no you won't be able to even put a breakpoint now we have a breakpoint i want to see that what will happen uh, when i place a command to stop the service whether my control reaches here or not that i want to see so let us see where is my service panel so here is the service panel and i'm going to just right click on it and i'm just going to put a stop message here so you can see the stop command comes here now you can see that what is happening you can see that we are assigning this thing we are writing to the file then we are actually sending this stop message and then it will be stopped so i'm just continuing it so you can put the breakpoint wherever you want to debug it so i hope you have understood that how you can put the breakpoint for debugging a service a window service now you can see that under the services panel the service has been stopped right but you were able to see that yes it reaches here it is able to reach here and it is able to show you everything that actually happening right so that is something we must have to do most of the times when we are debugging our applications right so now let me tell you how this is possible that how you will make it possible to debug your uh, service first of all i have created this uh, exe in the debug mode basically when you build it then there are two kinds of uh, build modes right let me close it and let me open it let me open the yeah let me open my visual studio so that i can show you what i'm trying to say so visual studio 2022 let me open it so if you see then under the build i'm just building it and my debug uh, my default configuration is debug right so debug is basically containing number of symbols when you uh, you know uh, co compile your project in the debug mode then in that case number of symbols are created your exe size is bigger when you are creating uh, in the debug mode when you are creating your exe in the debug mode why we have those many symbols loaded and why we have larger exe because we are uh, when we are uh, compiling and building in the debug mode then it adds the additional information for the debugging purposes the different symbols the symbol table everything is added but if you are creating in the release mode then in that case the optimal exe is created right you know uh, you will be getting the exe which will be having the least possible size which will work everything for you and it will not having any kind of symbol for you right so in case you are building your exe in the debug mode then you can see that by default if you are uh, you know creating your exe in the debug mode then by default if you come to the linker and then you go to the debugging section then uh, you can see that uh, you you are able to see it here like generate debug information optimized for sharing and publishing this thing has been selected here right this thing has been selected in the debug mode now let us see if i create into the it in the release mode if i deb, uh, if i build the exe in the release mode then what happens so let me just click on release and let me just build it right so once you build in the release mode then in that case you know this will uh, you know this is complaining something like in the debug mode everything was fine but in the release mode you are not able to see this thing so in case of release mode this we, we can fix it i mean this is compilation error let me show you uh, for the debugging information i am just uh, uh, coming into this debug debug version right so active release i am in the actively release mode right and uh, if i will be building the exe in the release mode then in that case you know by default it is generating the debug information so it will be creating a pdb file i will show you the pdb file but sometimes what happens that people select it no they don't want to create any debug information debug symbol so that their exe size is again smaller right so for these things uh, you know uh, we, if you if you have to uh, just uh, generate the debug information for the release version as well then in that case you need to select again this one the full debug 
right? Or you can simply uh, create like this one, the bug one. But I have selected this one. So if you want to uh, link, uh, if you want to create the exe in the release mode, then in that case also you can select the same thing. There will be no harm, right? So first of all, you need to understand that how you generate the debug symbols in the debug and release mode. Since I'm creating my exe in the debug mode, so you can see like what I have done. So let us go back to the uh, debug mode. So in the debug mode, what happens? You have already seen that uh, particular setting. So this setting, like I have selected this thing, the generate debug information optimized for sharing and debugging. So this I have already selected. So what happens because of this? Because of this, if I come to this folder where I have placed my code and the exe, where the exe is generated, you can see that when the exe is generated, along with the exe, you can see a PDB file. This PDB file, which is the program database file, this is generated. This contains all the sufficient information for you to put the breakpoint in your code when you are debugging it. Basically, it is program database which is helpful in debugging your exe, in debugging your application. And that is why this is really useful. Windows services.pdb. This program database, this program database need to be must need to be created if you want to debug your application if you have not set that particular debug information generation thing that i have just shown you then in that case this pdb will not be generated and you won't be able to debug your application at the runtime debug your service at the runtime right of or for matter any uh, for the for that matter any application for any application that you want to debug if you don't have this pdb you won't be able to debug it right so this pdb is really the important thing so if pdb is not there then you won't be able to uh, you know, uh, just debug your application, right? So, this PDB and the EXE, this PDB should be under that path which is recognizable by your Visual Studio at the time of debugging. I just showed you that I was debugging, but at that time, I attached my uh, Windows Service.exe, my, my Visual Studio with this Windows Service.exe. And after attaching, we were sure that we will be able to load the symbols. Why? Because PDB was under the same path where the exe has been placed. So if you have to debug your application, your PDB should be at a path which is known to your Visual Studio uh, 2022 or whatever version you are using, right? So these are the things that you must need to take care of while you are debugging your uh, service, right? So with this, I must say that I have completed, uh, you know, basic things about the services and now we are going to write the code for the socket and then that socket class or that socket object I will be creating in my service so that we can see that how the socket service will be, uh, you know, just running as a socket service. It will be helping the socket server to run and we will be receiving uh, the request from that socket server only. Okay. So, apart from that, I must say that in the previous video, what I did, let me just, yeah. In the previous video, I showed you that how you can add the time. Right, so I have added the timestamp in every every line uh, wherever I have placed the uh, log uh, logging. Right, so this has this has been pushed to the uh, to the uh, repository, and uh, I have uh, given the link of the repository, the URL I have given to clone the code in the previous video. You can uh, clone your code. You can clone the code to get the latest code. Right, so I hope uh, you must have understood. And you might have uh, you might have created some piece of code looking at this particular uh, you know uh, video, and uh, without creating the without writing the code yourself, you won't be able to understand the concepts. So I must say that you should write your own code to understand that how the things are actually working on. Okay. So with this, I would like to say have a nice day and bye bye. We'll meet soon again in the next video. Till then, please like, subscribe, and share my videos. Thank you.